Do you ever wonder why some people can communicate naturally at work, but you find it so difficult? Does the thought of leading a meeting or giving a presentation make you feel nervous, maybe scared? And if this presentation is in English, do you feel even more nervous? I know you do. This is the first video in a six-part series named AIMED, where I will share my best communication skills framework for presentations and meetings. I'm Grant, and I've been an executive business English communication coach for many years. I've coached many CEOs and executives how to communicate confidently in English so they can grow their businesses all over the world. As I've said many times in these videos, I'm not a teacher. I do focus on coaching business people to have great communication skills and doing that in English. The secret to great communication skills is preparation. In this six part aimed series, I will give you the best preparation tips and strategies to have you confidently communicate in business. Most people make the mistake of thinking that the presentation is about the presenter, but that's 100% wrong. The presentation is always about the audience. If you are presenting or leading a meeting, you have a responsibility to serve your audience and give your audience what they need or want. Let's look more into your audience. You will hear more about this point in part two of this six part aimed series. So be sure you find the next video. Can you guess what the I stands for in the aimed framework? Please put your guesses in the comments. I bet no one will be able to guess what the I stands for. I can't wait. <laughs> to see your comments. The first step in your preparation is to answer the question, who is your audience? The A in AIMED stands for audience. It is impossible to communicate effectively unless you take the time to think about who your audience is. Think about this for a minute with me. This is true if you are communicating with one person or a group of 200 people. It doesn't matter if you're leading a meeting or giving a presentation. You need to understand the following. Three steps to knowing your audience. Step one, who is this audience? Step two, why is this audience here? And step three, how can you relate to this audience? I want to use an example to help explain how to think about your audience. Let's say you work for a 200 person international technology company, and there's a full company meeting every three months. There are many departments in this company, and each department needs to give an update each quarter to the full company. In my example, let's say that you work in the engineering department. The responsibilities of the engineering department is to write computer code and create solutions to make the software of the company the best it can be. There are 40 people in your department out of 200 total employees in the company. You must give the update of what your department has done in the last three months and give an idea of what your department goals are for the future. Your department is full of software engineers and people that can write amazing computer code. So you stand up in front of the full company, you're nervous, and you start giving all this great information about how your team wrote amazing computer code and you go into great detail about I just solved some big computer coding problem. 
You even make slides showing the brilliant computer code that some members of your team wrote. Your team is fantastic and you love talking about computer code and very complicated technology things. Oh my God. Can you imagine the reaction of people in the sales department or the finance department or the marketing department or the human resources department when they need to listen to this incredibly detailed presentation on computer coding? They will be scrolling TikTok and YouTube shorts on their phone and not listening to anything that you said after the first 10 seconds. You completely failed to communicate. But why? Well, let's look at step number one. Who is your audience? You failed to make a successful presentation because you didn't spend one second of time in your preparation for this presentation by thinking about who your audience is. There is something very interesting when you're thinking about this step, and that is not only is it important to understand who your audience is, but it's more important to understand who your audience is not. Your audience is not your department. Your department already knows what you did last quarter. Your department is only 20% of the company because you have 40 staff in your engineering department and there are 200 people in the company. That means that there are more than 160 other people in the company that are at this presentation and listening to your presentation and they're not in engineering. Your audience is not your boss or the other 10 people that make up the senior level management team. Your boss and the senior management team already know what your department did last quarter. And if they don't know, they can get that information anytime they want. Your audience is the people in the company that are not senior management, not your boss, and not your engineering team. Your audience is the approximately 150 other employees of the company that want to know what is happening in the company, but 100% are not interested in hearing about your amazing computer code and complicated technology stuff. Your audience is many different people from all over the company. Your audience is the person that pays the bills for the company, the marketing assistant, the human resource manager, and other people that do normal jobs in the company. Now think about these people. Picture who they are in your mind. Oh, yes, it's uh, Ina from finance, Christine from marketing, and John from human resources. Now that you know who your audience is, let's look at step two. Step two, why is this audience here? Remember, you are only thinking about the 150 people that are part of your real audience. So why are they here? Of course they're here at this meeting because they're required <laughs> to be at the meeting. So in my example, that's easy. But in many cases, people make a choice to go to a presentation because they're interested in the speaker or in the topic. In other cases, you might be leading a meeting and there are people in this meeting that are invited because their job requires them to know something about the topic of this meeting. After you really understand who your audience is, you always must ask yourself the question, why is this person or group of people here? The audience is always here for a reason. Let's go back to my example. The 150 people in the company audience are here to learn about how the company is doing. They're interested in knowing how things are going. We now understand who the audience is and why they're here. Let's look at the next step of how you can help this audience. Step three, how can you relate to this audience? 
The presentation and the meeting is not about you. It is 100% about your audience. And if you want this audience to be interested in your message, you must find a way to relate to the audience. You know who they are and why they're here. Now you need to find a way to relate to them. So how do you do that? Well, let's go back to my earlier example where you are the engineering department of the technology company and you are presenting to an audience of 150 coworkers that do not work in your department. One of the best ways to relate to your audience is to use empathy and understanding. Empathy is the ability to understand and share the feelings of another person. It means putting yourself in someone else's shoes and seeing things from their perspective. Here, you are the representative of the engineering department and can show empathy by acknowledging the different roles and contributions of the non-engineering staff. You can then continue to show your appreciation for the work of the audience and explain how the engineering team's efforts support their roles. Also, you as the speaker can relate parts of the presentation to specific departments or roles, highlighting how the engineering updates benefit them directly, trying to show how the engineering department relates to Ina from finance, Christine from marketing, and John from human resources would be a great strategy. In this way, you as the speaker will have the complete attention of the audience because you have taken the steps to really relate to this audience and there will be nobody in the audience scrolling through their social media on their phones. To summarize, the letter A in AIMED stands for who is your audience and how can you relate to them? And to review, you'll be very successful in planning your presentation when you use the three steps to knowing your audience. Step one, who is this audience? Step two, why is this audience here? And step three, how can you relate to this audience? As you can see, when you take the first step of preparing for your presentation or meeting by knowing your audience, you'll be in a position to plan your presentation and message in the next steps of AIM. Again, please look for part two of AIMED and type your guess to what the letter I in AIMED might stand for. I don't think you will guess it. Please like this video, subscribe to the channel, share your comments, and I also invite you to learn your Business English Confidence Score. You'll find the link in the description below this video.